Rosie, if you're going to cook low and slow, nothing cooks low and slower better than a piece of oyster blade. Alright. And that's what I've got in front of me. Now I'll just get okay. started with this. I'm going to cut this into six pieces. And the thing about cooking secondary cuts like this is that they are quite a lot cheaper. They're a lot easier to cook, I think, if mm. you cook them low and slow, because you always get a fantastic result at the end. And they're just beautiful so to It's good enjoy. for a dinner party, main course dinner party. It is, it is great yeah. for a dinner party. Now, I've got some salt and some pepper. You make sure you season your meat up. Salt loves meat and meat loves salt, Rosie. You know they go together beautifully, don't I they? I have missed that phrase. <laughs> oh, you... I tell you, you still haven't given me a T-shirt. Oh, I'm going to have to get one for you. In <laughs> fact, I was uh, in Toowoomba recently doing a demonstration and in the crowd was a lovely young lady wearing a Salt Loves Meat, Meat Loves Salt t-shirt. Fantastic. Now, I'm going to brown this off and see what I do first, Rosie. Got the fat here, fat side down and I like to render that out and that fat will help to sear the outside of the beef. And as I put it in, you can actually hear that sizzle, which is what we're after. I can hear it. It's great, isn't it? Yeah. We love the they sound. They look like healthy bits of meat. They are healthy bits of meat. Red meat is great. I mean, if you do like enjoy meat, I always say it's better to eat less meat and eat better quality meat. I think that's now a better way I of doing it. You know what I mean? Sense. There yep. we go. And a couple in this pan here. What I'm going to do is sear everything off in these two pans and then put it all together and pop this pan here into the oven. Nice and clever. Now, I'll just pop that on there. That's going to brown off. You can hear it's browning off nicely. You want to get me working? I'm going to get you working, Rosie. I've got some anchovy there. I want you to take yep. the lid off and put the anchovy in a little bowl because I'm going to use that to flavour it up. And I'll take the time now, Rosie, to turn my beef over. You can see I've got lovely colour on that fat there. It's rendered down beautifully. Beautifully. Smells gorgeous, doesn't Smells it? Smells really good, actually. Yeah. Oh, so does the basil. Even for a non-meat eater, you get the idea. It's happening nicely. Oh, and I can appreciate it 100%. Yeah. Yes. That's great. So, to get things going, we're going to add some vegetables because we need to have lots of we vegetables. We do need a bit of veg. I'm glad to hear that. Vegetables help to balance out the flavour. It's not all about the meat. It's about having some lovely vegetables in there to make everything nice and tasty. And the onions, because I'm cooking it low and slow, I've gone for a, a much larger cut of onion. This will help to, you know, hold up. So when I get yeah. to the uh, to the end of serving it up, the chunky bits of onions, you'll be able to see it there. And yep. onions slow cook are delicious, right? Oh, they become They're unreal. Caramelised and yep. sweet. That's one of the best things. The garlic, I just sort of rough chop it like that. And the carrot, I just cut it on an angle like this, and you can see they're nice big chunks. These chunks will hold up to a, to a long period of cooking. Now, this will cook in the oven for about two and a half to three hours. And the thing with this cut of meat is it's sort of... You can do this sort of braising with any cut of meat. You know, ossobuco, shank, blade, all of those sorts of things. This recipe will work beautifully. Now, I'll just cut the celery like that and the chilli, I'll just take the cap off it like that and then cut it into big chunks so it goes all the way through. Mm. Now, I'm going to move this uh, beef out of the pan and you can see that... Gorgeous colour. Rosie, that colour is what you're looking for when, okay. you, when you're braising meat. It's really, really important. Now, this pan here is going to have some lovely flavour into it. In goes the garlic, the onion, the carrot, the celery and the chilli. And what we want to do is get all those flavours to marry together. And at this stage here is when I like to add my basil. And the thyme, in you, you go. Got that goes in there as well. And slide the anchovy along, Rosie. Oh, yeah, forgot about that. The anchovy you either love or hate. And in a dish like this, it's quite common to put three or four pieces of anchovy in there and these will fall apart and actually give a bit of flavour. Yeah. It also gives it a stocky sort of flavour and you won't taste the fish at all. It'll just give it that beautiful mm. Mediterranean... Richness almost as e well, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Richness yeah. is exactly what it gets. Capers, love them or hate them, I love them, so in they go. Now, Rosie, this is going to brown up for a couple more minutes. We're going to stir this round for a couple more minutes and let it sweat down and then we'll add some red wine, some port and finish this baby off. Now, Rosie, to slow things down a little bit, we need to add some butter because nothing slows things down and makes things delicious, like a nice big knob of butter in there. That'll also round out the flavour of the tomatoes and it will just give it a, a beautiful, beautiful flavour. It does slow you down, butter. It does, it does slow you down a lot. It does a lot, slow down. too much, maybe. And it makes it delicious as well. Yeah, I know, it's delicious. I'll stir that into it and then we'll add some tomato red wine in a couple of minutes and put this together. I can't wait to get this into the oven. Rosie, so much going on at once and it's all just coming down to the last final stages. Yep. In goes some red wine, luscious red wine. Fantastic. 
some tomatoes, some whole Australian tomatoes oh, that make good it. Stuff. Make sure you don't have any added sugar or any added salt in there as well. They make it nice and tasty. Some chopped tomatoes as well to just fill it out and make a nice body for the sauce. Lovely. And if you can pass me that pan over there, what I'm going to do oh, yeah. is snuggle these pieces of meat into the uh, sauce here, and I'll just have enough room to fit all these little babies in there all the way around. You love smuggling meat and sauce, don't you? you I do, it all the time. do, I do. It makes Every it tasty. Every time I look around, you're doing it. And see how it sort of fits in there beautifully? Enough yep. for six people in one pot. Now, all the stuff in the pan here, we need to keep. This is important. So what I do is what we call deglazing the pan, pour this in here, and that lifts off all the crusty stuff, all the bits of beef flavour that are in the pan yep. here, lifts it all off, and we just pour it over the Good top here. Good pro tip there. Oh, there we go. We don't want to waste a single thing, do we? No. Now, turn that off there. I've got some uh, paper here. This is baking paper. I've cut into a round piece here. This forms like an extra layer for a lid. I just pop that on top of there like that. Now, pop the lid straight on. There's enough heat in this pot. This will come up to the boil really quickly, but we're not going to wait for that. We're going to pop this into the oven, 160 degrees, about two and a half hours. This will be delicious. Rosie, get to the oven, please. There we go. Look at that, Rosie. You can smell it, can't you? I can. Slow cooking's different. It's got that richness about it that just, you can tell there's been many hours of love and labour gone into it. It all just starts to come together. And the most important thing with slow cooking, and this is one of the beautiful things about taking a secondary cut, is cooking it nice and low and slow like this. It just brings out the flavour and it becomes one of the best cuts of meat. And all I needed was a little bit of freshly chopped parsley on the top there. Look at that, that lovely saucer on the outside. The veggies have sort of become nice and soft. And this is the most important thing, Rosie. When I pull it apart like this, I'm going to show you, see how tender yeah. that meat is? Now, I'm going to have a little taste of that meat. Now, choose slowly the whole thing. We cooked it slow. Let's choose slowly. A bit of mindfulness to our food. How's that? Rosie, I've gone to a different place. That is really, really good. It's got lovely flavour to it. The tomatoes have gone all the way through it. That's the body of it. That's what's held it together. A little bit of port, some red wine in there. But the beef is fantastic. This is a crack of a dish and a great way to slow cook a lovely piece of beef. Great.